Guys, this has been a fantastic day. Are you guys enjoying yourself here with Gagalamp Amplify? Yeah. yeah, very good. Good information, right? So today's actual presentation, we're going to be spending some time talking to you all, who most of you are marketers in the room, one H, two, two token HR people. Where are you at? Where are my HR people? There we go. And then the last half, or the last uh, two thirds of our presentation, we're going to be spending talking to you as if you guys are sales people. So this is going to be an interesting discussion here. Uh, today's discussion is about why sales thinks your advocacy program sucks. Now, how many of you actually have an advocacy program? and that you're helping to support or wanting to have sales support your advocacy program? Raise your hand. How many of you have 100% participation from your sales advocates? One, congratulations. You should come up here and give this with me. I'm gonna bring you up here. Um, so we're gonna spend a little bit of time about thinking like a salesperson and helping you to understand how as a marketer, you need to speak to the sales team to get them to become advocates for the brand. Does that make sense? So, we're gonna do a little bit of contest. I told you that we're gonna pretend as if you're salespeople today, right? Salespeople love to have contests, so you've gotta gamify something. And so this would not be a conference without a gamification program. Are you with me on that one? All right, so here's your contest. Uh, for those of you that tweet the most, quoted statements or pictures from this, today, this evening session, we, and or maybe you don't tweet, maybe you like LinkedIn instead, you can post pictures, same thing, but you have to use Amplify Social and Social Selling. You're certainly welcome to tag me. What you will get, or you may use for your salespeople, is we do LinkedIn profile audits and we'll help produce a report that will show you everything that's wrong, not everything, almost everything that's wrong with your LinkedIn profile that you could use for your sales team as you wanted to as part of helping your sales team understand how to leverage social. So we're going to have a little contest. We want to make sure you're using Amplify Social. It's going to be on the bottom right-hand corner of every slide. Make sure you get your phones out and start tweeting away. We want to blow up Amplify Social. Can we do that? Can we blow up Amplify Social? Raise your hand. Yes? Yes? No, 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 no. Can we do that? Can we blow up Amplify Social right now? Raise it. There we go. We've got some life in the room. So most of you who go out and produce an employee advocacy program, you show slides like this and you talk about the Edelman's Trust Barometer study that was done that showcases how uh, uh, buyers perceive employees and their voice as greater levels of trust than the CEO themselves. In fact, some of you may have even shown this slide to leadership teams that showcase this type of data uh, that why you need to get employee advocates into your program. Does this look familiar to anybody? Only one person? Nobody else thinks like, thank you. Okay, all right, gotcha. And then you go out and talk about this with your sales brethren and you say, sales folks, we want you to become our advocates because you have a, a voice in the industry that your buyers will actually trust more than even our own CEO or our own content that we produce. And salespeople look at you like, you're crazy. They're like, what's in it for me? So you might even show this particular slide which shows the benefits firms receive from employee advocacy. Here was a study that was done. Increased visibility, you guys. We have to launch this particular program because we'll get greater brand visibility for the brand, whatever your brand might be. And in addition to that, better brand recognition. Uh, we'll get better inbound traffic, which, by the way, better inbound traffic translates into, for marketing, more leads for you, sales. Is that right? That's what we say. Isn't that correct? But salespeople say, wait a minute, so you want me to use my network to amplify your content that will produce greater brand visibility for you and produce more leads into the marketing funnel that don't come to me? And you say, yes, but also it's your personal brand. Think about this, you can become a thought leader. <laughs> and they're like, whoa, 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 are you serious, thought leader? You're like, yes. They're like, I don't care about being a thought leader. And then Mr. VP of sales says, I don't want my people on digital wasting time. They don't need to be thought leaders. They need to sell. They need to close deals. Does that sound familiar? Anybody raise your hand if that any of these things sound familiar? Okay, we're now on the same page. Now you guys are the marketers in the room that are having this type of discussion. And you're saying, geez, what am I missing? 
How come I can't get 100% participation from my sales organization to become advocates? Because I know this will help them. Yes or yes? Will becoming an advocate help them? Yes or yes? I can't hear you. Yes, it will. But now we need to make this, translate this back into the sales organization to help them understand. So you also say to them, here are some of the things that you can post, guys, in part of our advocacy program. It is all this great content that we're going to put into our, our gaggle amp. You're going to have all these gaggles. There's at least um, <clears throat> 10 different things. We're going to have recommended articles inside there. We're going to have client case studies. We're going to have client webinars. We're going to have events. We're going to have blog posts that you can put out there. And they look at you like, okay, cuckoo, cuckoo. And you're like, what don't they get? This content is here. I'm going to make it so easy. We've got the most amazing brand amplification, employee advocacy application out there in the world. I just spent all this money, and you're not getting the point. What am I missing? Well, there are two things that we know salespeople care about. Try to rattle them off. One, money. And two, money. Maybe a distant third might be money. <laughs> Personal brand. Become a thought leader. They might want to become a thought leader, but that's a distant third. Money and money. That's what we know that they care about. You understand that. So now we have to talk about a conversation that will help drive more money. So if there's only one thing that you remember from today's presentation, one thing, it's don't do normal. What you have normally done in terms of launching programs, employee advocacy programs, or trying to convince your sales advocates to become brand advocates for you, stop doing now. I want you to stop doing what is normal to you. And what you need to start thinking about is how can I speak the language of the sales team? Because by the way, by the way, while it is very, very, very true that all of your employees amplifying content for you can absolutely impact your brand, can absolutely impact leads, the majority of the buyers in terms of a ratio of buyers to someone's network are going to reside where and with who? Buyers to employee ratio. Sales. Why? Why will it reside as a higher ratio with sales? Who's out there talking to the customer to get the customer? Sales. Say it louder. Sales. So who has the largest ratio of buyers to person in their, uh, buyers to employee in their network? Louder people. Sales would. Sales naturally would have that inside their network. So this is a must do for you to get this right. And what we're going to go through today is how to actually make that happen. So I'm going to say, pretend now all of you are no longer marketers. You are salespeople. Raise your hand if you're a salesperson. Perfect. You're all salespeople. And I'm going to speak to you now for the next 20 minutes as if you were salespeople, not as if you were marketers. Is that fair? If I'm standing in front of a room, Here's the slide I'm going to ask all of you as salespeople. Salespeople, do you feel like this with respect to your sales opportunities? How many of you in the room, by a show of hand, feel like you are maximizing your compensation plan, you have your funnel full, and that you don't need to make any more money? Raise your hand. No hands, that's exactly what I thought. So you're dissatisfied in your sales results. I want to help you. I am your social media marketing manager, marketing director, VP of marketing, CMO, and we are going to be launching something really, really cool that is actually going to help you drive leads back into your particular funnel. But first, I need to take you through a journey, and I need you to understand what is happening in the marketplace that will directly impact you, and if you don't adopt, you will die. Let's talk more about that. I'm going to prove to you today <clears throat> that there are four cardinal qualities of today's modern buyer. The buyer that you are speaking with and that you are working with every single day that you are trying to penetrate. There are four things about today's buyer. Number one, today's modern buyer is digitally enabled. How do we know that? By a wild guess in the room here, 
What is the average number of connected devices that each of us across the globe, the average across the globe, own? 3.64. So that means worldwide, 3.64 connected devices. Mr. Salespeople, Mrs. Salespeople, do you realize that your buyer is included in this number? That your buyer has a connected device, an iPad, an iPhone, and at a minimum, a laptop computer that gets out to Wi-Fi. Hmm. What do you think they're doing on those connected devices? Let's keep on going. Quality number two. They're socially engaged. Now, most of the salespeople think, and sales leaders, by the way, I'm 40 years old. Last year, I conducted over 250 executive meetings, mostly with sales and marketers. And do you realize that the 40 and older, which are some of us in this room, they're scared of social. And as a result of being scared, they have no idea what to do with it, and they say, stay away from it. And so we're going to prove out to you today that you no longer can have that type of mentality. That the type of mentality that you need to have is that we are a socially engaged society. Let's prove that out. First off, in 2008, the U.S. population had a, 24% of the U.S. population had a, uh, a social networking profile. By the end of 2016, 78% of the U.S. population had a social networking profile. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of networking profiles that are out there. This includes all of them, eHarmony, dating sites, what have you. But let's just name the top ones. Salespeople, please name the top ones in the marketplace. There are at least five that you can rattle off. Number one is LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and one more big one. What is it? Pinterest? No. YouTube. YouTube. At least six. Six major ones. So let's focus in on these ones for a moment here. Let's talk about this question. Salespeople, did you realize a study was done that said, have you ever used to leaders, by the way, B2B buyers, have you ever used LinkedIn, sorry, social media such as LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or online professional communities to assist you with your company purchasing decisions? The answer was 75% of your buyers said yes. Now let's break that down. Of that 75%, how many of them were executives? I mean, what percentage of them of the executives said, yes, they do? 84% of C-level executives said they use their professional communities to help them make purchasing decisions. Are you seriously not thinking that your buyers are not engaged on social? You just may not see them. So now that I just proved out to you that our buyers are digitally connected, socially engaged, there's third quality. They are mobile attached. Now, salespeople, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. <clears throat> this is going to be an embarrassing question for some of you, but we're all salespeople, we're all friends here. On this next picture, I want you to tell me if you do this. How many, by a show of hand, take your mobile device to the bathroom with you and scroll up and down? By the way, I'm raising my hand because I do it too. Raise your hand. No, 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 don't, don't try to lie. Raise your hand, don't feel uncomfortable. Okay, like they don't want to raise their hand. They're like, oh, girl, I can't do that. Don't tell, don't tell everybody I'm going to do that. Yes, you do. You do it. I do it. And guess what? Your buyers do it too. Now, what do you think they're doing while, uh, what, are you, or what are you doing while you're sitting on the pot, scrolling through on your phone doing this? You're swiping up and down. What are you looking at? Instagram, social media, right? You're looking at social media. What are the two things that you most commonly stop at? Two things that you most commonly stop at? Pictures, videos. So let me ask you a question, salespeople. You just got through saying, almost all of you in the room raised your hand for those of you that weren't embarrassed, said you take your device to the bathroom with you. Can we agree that your buyers are doing the exact same thing? You just said that, what are you doing? You're scrolling up and down on social media. And, you, and I just asked you, what are you stopping at? And you just said, pictures and videos. Whoa, novel concept. So do you think then 
that we should have pictures and videos on their social feeds representing your personal interest and or company-related interests that might get to them while they're sitting there scrolling on the pot? Yeah, interesting. So now the light's starting to shine. You guys see the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit? One more. What about this? How many of you sleep with your phone on your nightstand? How many of you check the phone as the first thing you do in the morning? So wait a minute. 100% of the room just raised their hand saying they sleep with their phone next to them. 90% of the room said they check their phone as the first thing they do in the morning. What do you think your buyers are doing? Same thing. So we established they're digitally connected, uh, <clears throat> mob uh, mobile attached, and that they're socially engaged. And there's one more attribute about your buyer. They are video hungry. You want me to prove that? Let's take a look at that. In 2017, by the end of 2017, most of you have seen this, experts believe that 69% of the consumer-related traffic that's consumed will be video. The stat shows in 2018 it will rise to 79%. How many of you as marketers in this room, by the way, pull out of your sales role, as marketers in this room know that video is a necessary channel that you must address ASAP? Content Marketing World identified this as one of the top five marketing strategies that are being leveraged across every enterprise. And this is no different, Mr. Salesperson. Now you're back into salespeople role. This is no different for you. How are you engaging with your buyers differently? We know that they're video hungry. We know that they're consuming video traffic. Here's the story. Salespeople, the way that our buyers our customers buy has fundamentally changed. We have seen this stat a thousand times, but I've just proven it to you that this, in fact, is the way that buyers are engaging online. 61% are doing self-driven information research prior to picking up the phone. Yes or yes. They will get the information with or without you. Yes. They will find that data, whether or not you are providing it. They will go where they need to go. They will go to where no man has gone before. And they will find that data before they pick up the phone. In fact, many of them are coming very well armed into a discussion, and you're wondering, why is it that they know so much information? Well, salespeople, they're not stupid. Modern buyers require modern sellers. Modern buyers require modern sellers. The question that you have to ask yourself, are you a modern seller? And just look at what you do alone. You yourself are consuming this data in the fashion that I just showed you, and you raised your hand on almost every single occasion. Your buyers are not doing anything differently. So, customers no longer want to be sold to. They want personalized, Fresh, educated, engagement, and insightful-based uh, discussions with their salespeople. They don't want pitches. They don't want cold calls. Just ask your VP of sales. Mr. VP of sales, I'm going to pretend a VP of sales is in the room, and I'm going to pick on Doug. Doug, you're my VP of sales. Doug, how many cold emails do you get per week? Just say five. And Doug, of those cold emails that you get, how many of them do you actually respond to? Oh. So you mean cold calling doesn't work? Cold emails don't work? It's a waste of time. Now, we would never tell a salesperson that the cold call is dead. We would never tell a salesperson that they shouldn't send out a cold email unless, of course, you're in Canada or in Europe <laughs> where the rules are quite different. But what we would tell them is that those channels, while they're still there today and they exist, they are not as effective as they used to be 10 years ago. And Mr. VP of Sales, Doug, you grew up selling the way that you did, knocking on doors, going to business parks, handing out business cards, going to networking events, and shaking hands. Guess what? Your modern buyer is sitting on the, on the pot, scrolling through their social media feed, grabbing information that they need, and they're not at that networking event. And in many cases, that modern buyer is actually a remote employee that has moved out of the corporate office because the corporation has decided to shut down 
millions of square feet and put everybody at home to be able to give a better experience for the employee. Am I wrong, HR? So what we have to ask ourselves is, is how, in fact, well, oh, I hope this loads. Something's wrong here. Here we go. How, in fact, are buyers engaging with salespeople today? Number one, the old way is not dead. It is just less effective. And we as salespeople, you as salespeople in this room right now, you have to learn how to manage a multi-channel approach to connect with your buyer. That multi-channel approach does not mean that I'm going to give you a silver bullet. The application that I'm about to roll out to you and teach you how to use called employee advocacy, otherwise AKA sales advocacy, it is not a silver bullet. It will not make you become Tom Cruise. But it is a bullet in your gun. And if you are missing this, if you're shooting a blank, you may miss out on an opportunity. And so as a direct result, we now engage with our buyers through text messaging. How many of you actually text your, if you're in a buying position, how many of you actually text with your salesperson? A few of you in the room. It is a growing trend that is taking place. It's easy, it's quick, it ha it's happening. How many of you actually get video messages from your sales team? Nobody. One. But if you received a video message through email instead of a text, would it be different? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? Absolutely. Would it stop you? Yeah, and might you click on it because there's actually something different that makes them unique. So here's the thing. Mr. Salespeople and Mrs. Salespeople in the room, why are you not using video? There are platforms that you could go out and buy and use this, but also, too, leveraging social networks. Oh, it just happens to be. Today's training that you're going to get is actually teaching you how to actually leverage a tool called Gaggle Amp that will help you with this social networking problem. So our job here as marketers, we want to help you sell more. We want to help fill the gap on some of these uh, areas right here to help you be able to achieve more. And if you do that, I promise you this. If you actually feed your network with content, your buyers will engage with that content. Your buyers will look at that content. And I can tell you, me personally, story after story after story that proves out that that is the case. Otherwise, all of you who are in the room here that are doing content marketing, for example, there would be no purpose for content marketing. Agree? So, salespeople. Why should you care about sales advocacy? Money. <laughs> yes, that's true. Before you get to the money, this is what you're going to tell them. This is what I'm going to tell you as salespeople. Your online profile, first of all, serves as your digital brand. Let me assure you this, <clears throat> that if you create outreach to a prospective buyer, and if they are remotely interested in what you have to say and what you have to offer, they will look you up. And let's, you want a proof point of that? Let's take any one of our executive buyers in this company and bring them into this room here and ask them, before you call a salesperson back, what do you do? You Google them or go to LinkedIn. So, does your brand suck online? Do you have nothing available for your buyers to see? Are you, is, is your digital profile a resume, quote a crushing sales rep, account executive, or is it a resource that helps your buyer along the buyer's journey? And marketers, your job is to help turn them into a resource. Number two, it becomes your digital Rolodex. By a show of hands, how many of you salespeople in this room actually have the old school Rolodex that you put business cards inside of that's indexed by, last by, by, um, by letters and you roll, the, you roll the ball like this? How many of you actually have that still? Oh, nobody. Oh, surprising. Well, guess what? Your LinkedIn profile serves as your digital Rolodex. Did you know that? You don't have a place to store business cards. You probably keep them inside a drawer. You throw them inside there and put a big rubber band and say one day you'll get back to them. But why don't you just reach out and connect with somebody and build your digital pro presence online. Use your LinkedIn profile and Twitter profile as a way to be able to connect with your buyers. And then you can serve them content so that while they're sitting on the pot, scrolling on their social media feeds, what will they see possibly on your, in their feed? Your content. It is also your digital business card. 
Many of you ask for my business card. I rarely show up to conferences with a business card. You know what I do? I say, oh, I don't have one, but let me do this. Let me connect with you on LinkedIn. Why? Because all the data is right there. It's electronic. I'm not going to sit there and take that data and um, try to program it into my phone. I can just connect with you on LinkedIn, and guess what? Your contact information is right there on the bottom of your LinkedIn profile. If I need to get a hold of you, I will simply hit your LinkedIn profile, simply go down to the contact information, and hit phone number and dial. Number four, it's how Google, Yahoo, and Bing will display you. Did you realize that if you Google your first name, if you have your LinkedIn profile set up for public open settings, as an example, along with Twitter non-privatized, your name might actually display with your LinkedIn profile and your Twitter handle in position number one and two. In fact, it wasn't until about a month ago that my LinkedIn profile was not in first position over our company website and my personal page on the company website. And do you know how many articles that I've written and where I've been featured at? But my LinkedIn profile had more juice from an SEO perspective than all the other content out there until about a month ago. So, Mr. Sales and Mrs. Sales Rep, will your buyer look you up? Yes, what will they find? This is what you want them seeing. What, or you, sorry, you want them to see what you want them to see from Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Fourth, your personal digital profile serves as your mini microsite. You want to have that full of content so that you can help your buyer along their buyer's journey. If you have no activity whatsoever on your digital profiles, then you have an empty website. And for the marketers in the room, if you have the most amazing, beautiful, templatized website that has no content, will it serve any purpose, yes or no? Louder. Absolutely not. And so you as Mr. Sales and Mr. Salesperson, you need to think like a marketer. Today's modern buyer requires a modern, say it louder, seller. And last but not least, it's your talent recruitment page. Guess what? Leaders are now looking for people who have the digital mindset, who are utilizing digital technologies to be able to help expand their sales pipeline. They're not interested in the old, archaic, dinosaur-like salespeople, who are not interested in leveraging technologies that will actually help advance the brand of the organization, as well as identify the culture that they want to display out there in the marketplace about how great this place may be to work. So we need your help with that, too. That having been said, why sales advocacy actually works. Let's get to the why now. This is what you care about. Number one, you're 50% more likely to meet or exceed quota. The stats show it. Those who are engaged with digital, these are the results. But I couldn't get to the results until I actually proved to you that this is a valid channel. Do you agree? So some of you are actually showing this slide right here before you've proven to them that this is a viable methodology that they should be engaged on from a channel perspective. So never show these, this slide right here until you've proven to them that they, in fact, must use the channel. Number three. Oh, number two, there are an average of five pieces of content that are consumed before ready to speak to a sales rep. 86% of consumers post purchasing questions on social media sites to help them decide. Now, this is a consumer-based um, uh, stat right here. Nonetheless, we buy like consumers. Number four, 65% of buyers viewed between five to eight pieces of content from the winning vendor that came from inside view. Oh my gosh, huh. So as a salesperson, should marketing be doing all the work? Does marketing know, is marketing speaking directly to your buyer when you guys are just starting out on a sales opportunity? Or is it your job to speak to your buyer? Your job, your job. It's marketing's job to make sure you have the right content that maps to the buyer's journey. Number six, 78% of reps utilizing social media and social selling outperform their peers. Let's just say that number is 50% wrong. Would you rather have a 40-something percent or 30-something percent chance of being able to exceed your quota? Absolutely. And last but not least, 82% of B2B buyers feel the vendor's content had an impact on their final purchasing decision. 82%. Why? Why? Because what are they doing prior to picking up the phone calling you? What are they doing? Looking you up. Research. They are out there researching and they're gathering data and information and data points. So, salespeople who are in the room right now, I want you to stop for a minute. I want you to think about your quota. You've got, pretend with me, okay, pretend with me for a second. 
you've got a million dollar a year quota. If you were to go ask any small business owner whether or not a million dollars a year in annual revenue is a big number, what would you think they would say? Absolutely. So as the CEO of your business, you are constantly looking for ways to be able to engage with your buying community in a different way that reaches them, that makes you stand out from the crowd. And if your competitors are not actively engaged through content and video, through texting and or through traditional methodologies, if your competitors are not doing it, you're just the same as your competitor. So how can you be different? How can you stand out from the crowd? How can you show yourself that you are engaging with insightful based information that is helping your buyer along the way? It is leveraging digital channels. So we want you to be the CEO and now you're going to come back as a marketer. Can you come back as a marketer with me? You are all marketers in the room. I want you to remember that as a marketer, I have never been in marketing up until about a year and a half ago when I launched my company. I launched my company because I was asked by LinkedIn to speak at their annual users conference to talk about a digital selling program that I launched as a VP of sales. 20 years in sales, and then something happened when you speak at one of the largest social media's annual users conferences. It blew up after that. And as I came into this role teaching marketers and sales leaders how to actually help drive additional revenue into the sales pipeline through digital selling, through digital sales transformation, there was one thing that I knew that marketing doesn't speak oftentimes the language of the salesperson, and that is your job as a marketer is to make uh, all things in the sales process unequal, is to give them the leg up. And you must stand in front of that room in front of your salespeople and say to them, my job is to make sure that we make all things unequal, that we're going to make you stand out from the crowd. Your job is to determine whether or not you actually want to use what is going to help you. So, in closing, I said, don't do normal. In addition, don't let your advocacy program suck. <laughs> so, uh, guys, I do want to close with one thing. I'm at my time right now. Next Tuesday, I will be announcing the largest thing to ever take place in the digital sales transformation industry. And I couldn't be more excited about it. Gagalamp has been an amazing partner for uh, our organization. They are part of this <coughs> announcement that we're making, or they are part of a subset of the solutions that we're, we're, we're announcing. Something massive is happening. It is the largest thing that will ever hit the digital sales transformation space. And so I would encourage you, if nothing else, you want to hear what's going to happen? Go ahead and subscribe to our list. You can unsubscribe afterwards. You'll get the message. All you have to do is text your phone number to 925-403-4170. Not your phone number, text your email, excuse me. Text your email to 925-403-4170, and as soon as you do that, I'll respond back to you and say, what's your name? And if you don't want me to say, hey there, put your name back inside, there, in, inside the text message. This is very exciting. I also want to introduce my colleague, David, in the room. David, raise your hand. If you have any questions, he's right here in the center of the room. You can feel free to come and talk to us afterwards. But next Tuesday, June 20th, we'll shake the digital sales service industry as a whole. Nothing has ever been done like this, and I'm super excited about it, and it's the first time in history that this will be done. So if you subscribe and you get the message, I only ask one huge favor. Help us amplify the message if you enjoyed this pr presentation. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you, and if we have time for q and I'm happy to take some, some questions. So, so what kind of pu pushback do you get from sales leadership on this? Because I've had some of these conversations, and I, I, we talked about this earlier, and it's, there's, how do I say this gently? There seems to be a wide range of sophistication in sales leadership on this topic. And um, you talk to them all the time. And I know a lot of the marketers in this room I've spoken to personally or people on our team have. And they really struggle to connect and get that sense of urgency. So what kind of pushback do you get back? I know you give a little bit of a pattern there, but what are some of the common things you, you hear back from sales leaders on this? Yeah, well, number one, first off, I invite all of you guys to connect to me on LinkedIn. Just hit the connect button. Um, we're, we're here face to face, so you don't have to personalize the message. So feel free, Mario Martinez Jr. But the number one thing that um, last year alone, when we had as many executive meetings as I did, and I was meeting with marketers and especially the social media team, when salespeople thought, or sales leaders said, oh, social selling, 
we got to go ask social media team to help our, te our people um, learn social selling. Then so social media team, no offense to any social media folks in the room, would come in and they try to be able to help teach them how to properly brand themselves, how to engage online. And salespeople are like, <laughs> yeah, like she or he has ever done this, right? And that was the number one issue that we heard is that social media folks and marketers are saying, and demand generation managers are like, they just won't listen to me. They just won't listen to me. And unfortunately, unless you've ever carried a bag, you don't know the secret handshake. And there is something to do with salespeople, that you have to have the secret handshake in order for me to have respect for you. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Please don't take that the wrong way. This is, this is, not, no, this is not a crazy boys club or anything like that. It's just the way we think, right? If you've never done it, then how can you teach me how to do it, right? If you've never prospected. So how do you get around that? Number one, uh, that's why um, a lot of organizations would engage with the outside. Help somebody else who can talk the sales language, teach them and show them um, the experience. But number two, you've got to get buy-in from at the top levels. If you don't have your CMO aligned with your CSO or whoever it is that's heading up sales, I didn't see any presentations here today that talked about aligning the CSO and the CMO. There may be tomorrow, and if I miss one, I had to step out for a couple times in the room, I apologize. But if you want to launch a sales advocacy program, which is a sub-component of your employee advocacy program, you cannot launch without proper alignment and 100% commitment from the CSO that he or she believes that this is going to help his, his or her sales organization. You will have an epic hashtag fail. So do not launch an advocacy program unless you have the full power and support of the CSO or whoever's in charge of sales to actually be aligned, and that requires your CMO. So that's the best answer I can give outside of bringing an organization that can help you do that. Align the two. Any other questions? I think they want to get to drinks. I think Ladies and gentlemen, drinks. thanks for having me.